Okay, mi amor, it's been two years since we got this car, our Model 3. And you guys, if you've been following the channel for a while, have seen a lot of that, but I thought is now is a good time to just get together and talk about you know how it's holding up, our experience after two full years of owning a Tesla Model 3. It started with me taking delivery or me driving it for the first six months to a year-ish. Yeah, because you did a lot of videos in the beginning. And during that time, you drove our Model S, and then eventually we sold the S, got the X. Now that's been my daily driver for over a year. So this has been your car for over a year now, maybe close to a year and a half. So how's it going? What's your thoughts on it after that time? It's going good. Every time <clears throat> you go out of town, I can either choose between driving either one, or if you borrow this one to go to LA with, I always miss this car. Yeah. So you prefer this one over... I do. I prefer... it. It, I'm more comfortable with parking it and driving it and I know the angles of it. I don't know. I just, yeah, I, I definitely prefer it. Now, it doesn't fit a lot of stuff. I'm landscaping the front yard and I like to buy furniture a lot and interior, I do interior design stuff with chairs and things like that. So there is a little bit more to be desired with the space of how stuff fits. Yeah. So that's the only time I borrow your car. And now with two kids as well, we have, it's really tight kind of when both of them are in here because one of them is very young and we have a rear facing seat. Right. And the other so one take has up the a convertible ton of room. car seat. So both of them are pretty large. Like I, we couldn't put someone in between, I don't believe. Right. Uh, we had some family in town and I used the X for that. Yeah. So function wise, not the greatest utility. I think for being a two car family though, I like having one smaller car. What about it? Well, city living, it's very hard to park. It's so it's easy. Like I go down to the farmer's market and Hillcrest a lot and there's really tight spaces. So the fact that I don't have to worry, not that the X is much bigger, but it's, it's bigger. It is bigger, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I just feel like I never really have to worry about parking with this car. Mm -hmm. And it's just really fun to drive. Like yeah. I haven't had this much fun driving a car since my first car was stick shift. And yeah. I remember after I went from stick shift to automatic, I was just like, driving is just a way to get me to another place. Boring. But yeah. this, like I get excited to get in my car and <laughs> drive around. That's saying I a get, lot. I get super excited in it. So it's, it's just really enjoyable to drive. At night, it still has a little bit that like freaky, it's just so dark in the car at yeah, night. Yeah, because there's no dashboard behind the wheel yeah. or any of those I'm things. I'm just not a great night driver in general. I don't know, like LASIK yeah. didn't help me there. <laughs> so how is it holding up? It's holding up good. I feel like in the beginning, we had a lot of quirks. Mm -hmm. It was early, early, we were early delivery. We were one of the, right? January 2018, so we were one of the first Model 3s off it the line. It seemed like there was a lot of stuff that we were taking it in to get fixed. I think you have like a video on There's a bunch that. of videos out there I've done. I'll put some links in the description if you guys want to go see the history of this car. Yeah, it just, just once that stuff kind of got cleared up, which you drove it a lot that first six months mm -hmm. with the window and little stuff. I've not had really anything it was, it's been software stuff. So sometimes I'll get in and the backup camera won't work. And then the next day they do a software update and it will change. And then sometimes the backup, backup camera will look blurry or yeah, pixelated right. and then that will change. So I've had a little bit of software stuff. Weirdest thing I've had, the, the rock. Remember that? Yeah. This is a crazy story. Okay. So I was driving the car a while back. It happened to be after rain. Uh, we were getting a bunch of rain last year and I heard this car next to me was making this God awful noise. I thought it was just this screeching, like old school car. And so I rolled my windows up and turned the music up a little bit. I started driving and as I'm driving, I realized that sound is my car. So I rolled down the window and it is just like screeching. And I pull up into the parking lot. I call you. We try to troubleshoot it a little bit. We don't know what's going on. We we end up spending a full day on it. We tow it. We bring it home. We think it's maybe the suspension. We, we can't really figure out what it is. And um, was it a Tesla guy that came? It was a Tesla service a person Tesla's, came to tow it from Tesla, the house. Yeah, Tesla service person. Because I think I called AAA and they and I just said bring it to the house. Tesla will have someone come and then they'll fix it and figure it out. Yeah, and uh, long story short, there was. A rock that was causing this problem and so the Tesla service guy when he pushed on the 
It's that little metal plate. That's it's called the rotor dust plate. It's behind the rotor on where the brakes are, and it is there to keep dust and debris from hitting or, the rotor. Or trap dust and debris. In this case, <laughs> yeah. the opposite. So he put he pushes on it, a little rock falls out, and we think it's hilarious. And two days ago, it happened again to me. And luckily now I know what it is, but it was the exact same thing. It's this little tiny piece of gravel. That is a weird kind of just, I know right. about this specific car. It almost right. maybe is just this. I wonder if that's just this car specifically. You found or... Boy, remember? Oh, Someone... no, that's right. I have seen other people yeah. talk. So maybe that's a weird thing. And talking to Tesla, it's they said, quirky, well, this yeah. can can, you know happen to anyone I'm like yeah but I've never in all my years owning cars have have had this happen so one of the things that we really need to think about too is the battery because with an electric car people are very concerned about having to replace this and the cost mm. and all that and so the question is battery degradation so the idea there is we got more battery yeah we, we kind of have battery appreciation so when we bought it it had 310 miles of range reported now this is a long range rear wheel drive which is currently not available for sale on the website i'm not sure if you can call in and get this one uh, but when we got it this was essentially the only one that was that was available um and so since then it's went from 310 to 325 i don't know if we've ever actually got 325 when it on the screen maybe 324 is the best but yeah it's I, went up i guess is the way to think of it so yeah different i haven't noticed i mean I, i'm probably i feel like we drive the car a lot because we do a lot of long range tests and stuff like that right but i'm on a daily basis we're not a big commuter yeah car yeah how, how far do you drive on a daily basis. Well, it's kind of embarrassing. I mean, like, sometimes six miles. Because <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't go to a job. She works from home. Yeah, um, but I do drive a lot when I do drive somewhere. Like, the other day, it was charged all the way up to 320. It was 324 or something. We had yeah, accidentally pretty high, yeah. Turn, we hadn't turned it off trip mode. And I got it down to, like, 180 miles, and I got home, and I was like, I need to plug it in tonight. <laughs> range I anxiety. A, yeah, I only have 180 miles. So I laughable. love having long range. I never have to think about it. If I leave the car, there was a lot of times when I was pregnant that I was so sick I wasn't driving for a few days. And I, I would leave the car, I'd get back in it. It was just nice to have range and yeah. I didn't forget to plug it in. So I think the long range and having that battery doesn't sit and drain at all. I haven't had any more. Yeah, it's, it's pretty drain. minimal. Um, and in terms of. I did when I parked outside. Right. So we switched it to where this car is parked in the, in the garage now because the way our house is, we get a ton of sun. Oh, right. And, and the AC was just nonstop. Yeah. Black car, AC. So for yeah. us, our battery phantom drain right. was really getting hit hard by having it parked in our driveway. So I moved it inside. I've not had any phantom drain anymore. Yeah. Even when I walk into the like garage Like one with or my two phone. miles or something. Like yeah. Another thing is because it's connected to your phone and we have a small house, my phone is very near my car a lot. Yeah, and so it's always connected. Like you're sitting in the living room at yeah. all, all hours of the night and they have a little notification, you know, connected. So, uh, but I don't know if that, if, because if the car can't go to sleep, yeah. it's gonna cause more phantom drain. But yeah, um, yeah since did. moving had, it in the garage. We had drain problem when we had Even driveway. in the very beginning, I remember I did that first range test. I went and uh, got a sandwich for 30 minutes or something and came back and lost 20 miles of range. In now, the heat? Was it in? In Palm Springs. Palm Springs. I mean, it was in the heat, it was in the sun, but it was like 65 degrees, so it wasn't like hot. Yeah, so I haven't really noticed know? anything. It, I feel like that fixed everything. We've moved our keys and our phones away from the front door. Yeah. So all of that has helped where it's not just running when we're not there. As far as being somewhere else, Phantom Drain, I think the only time I really notice it is when we're crunched on miles. We're road tripping. Yeah. We have 15 miles left and we are stopping to grab a right. sandwich or something. Right. That's the only time I really notice it. Other than that, as a daily driver, I yeah. never So so you that charge anything. at home yep. almost exclusively. Yeah, I I never really supercharge. I can just plug it in at home and it's yeah. enough. Unless we're on a road trip. And so Oh yeah, we supercharge in a road You know, let's trip. talk about that because we've been on a few road trips. I've taken this on tests. Uh, one This is our road trip car in the sense it has so much range. Yeah. So I can go all the way up to Pasadena and turn around and pretty much make Well, it. I I went from Vegas to LA without stopping at all. Oh yeah. See, yeah. That's, I mean, that's a pretty big trip. It makes like just road tripping so much if if time is an issue for and you. In addition to not just the long range, the charge speed 
because oh, yeah, it has the V3 charge. V- I never V3, have to do that. Right, and so this thing can really juice up really quick, which is great if you're at a V3 charger. Which there's only really a f- couple, right? Well, there's a lot more now, but uh, it's not like they're everywhere. So even V2 chargers, I, I think this one tends to yeah. get higher I no, ratings. I have no range anxiety in this car. I never even think about it. I yeah. do uh, when I drive past a gas station. I realize it's been like two years since I've been to one. Yeah. Like I honestly don't think I would know how to. Right. Fill like, up. wait, where do I, does it, does someone come and do it's, this? What? Two years is a long time. Yeah. So. Four years for me, basically. In terms of updates, there's been over a hundred updates to this car, software updates and things that Tesla has released. What are your, you know, favorite ones? Things that you actually use, you know, because there's, I feel like, like there's so many where you're like, I don't even notice. Like it, updates, but. like we didn't have it when we first got the car. Uh-huh. Uh, Spotify. Spotify. That Winter. was nice because I have a lot of um playlists already made uh-huh. so it was just it's just seamless now yep um i mean the camera back the backup, backup camera, camera being it better was, so it people was junk when we first had it yeah people that are just getting their model three or maybe got it in the past year don't realize that the backup camera was almost useless when we first got the car it was, it was really bad it like one of those little toy cameras yeah like a little kid toy camera yeah it, you, it was almost under- it, looked, it looked like a one megapixel camera or something mm-hmm. and then and then one day it just miraculously yeah really so good. and i remember even from the very beginning thinking this can't be the real camera there's just some s- configuration like the guys like got it working but never tuned it to you know the iso yeah. and, the, and the aperture and all those now, things was sentry mode sentry mode was new okay i like that and so was the dash cam which I, was also new there's still a little bit with sentry mode i would love to sometimes i'll come back to my car and it will say 12 yeah and you're like reported, what happened and i just wish i could see it right yeah. away like if it was integrated in the app or something would be more helpful because i've mm-hmm. honestly never come back and looked at it i don't even know how right um right. and we have that thing called the roadie where you can do it but i've never shown you how to do that that's I don't right think. yeah yeah so i don't really know how to do that and uh what other update was there that well there's netflix and youtube and those things which we haven't really used much but it's kind of nice if you're charging or yes i could see where know, that, some of the games yeah i now i use this car a lot in the sense that i sit in here a lot and that would be somewhere i could use it but now, do you have to be on wi-fi though no oh okay so i probably could use it for that having a baby a newborn he's sometimes sleeping in the car and so i sit outside of the grocery store for an hour yeah until he's it's just letting him sleep or, yeah. or i nurse in the car a lot that it's Definitely my favorite thing about owning a Tesla specifically would be the fact that there's no emissions when the car's on and I we tend to use a car a lot on. Like yeah. remember the other day it was just pouring down in it. Yeah. it was pouring down rain and we were just sitting in here. I nursed the baby, I changed his diaper, we hung out, Jack was playing video games. Like, yeah, just hanging out. It feels like you're camping, like in your car, you know, we, we hang out a lot. So yeah, I yeah. have not used Netflix a ton. Well and then um there was that one update for what's called Smart Summon. Where it okay, does so it in the parking where, lot. Yes, and we tested this. Now, I think this. we've only ever, I've only ever done this it. This is crazy, Because in though. real world, I would never do that. No, I would Unless it was like an empty parking lot or pouring down rain and no one else was there. Like, it would be very few cases. I just don't trust it at all. I don't, yeah. So, I, I guess, in theory, you could be standing outside of Trader Joe's and you could be seeing your car and you could smart summon it to you to pick up your groceries in theory, yeah. right? But, you know, yeah, it's... Uh, I haven't used it. There was a day that I wish I would have remembered we had summons because I got trapped in between my car right. and I probably... That's just forward, backward, you would have yes, done. Yes, yeah. I would have done that. I just kind of... I guess I still feel a little uncomfortable sometimes using it in public. <laughs> I mean, you don't really even use autopilot much, if ever, do you? Uh, no, I'm not a fan of autopilot. Yeah, I mean, and when I, I use it... I a little it, baby in the car. I don't want to, like... Yeah. Now, I do like the adaptive cruise control. Right. And there are cases where autopilot is really nice for... Mm -hmm. It tends to be when you're on that long stretch going to LA. Yeah. Well, and actually, stop and go traffic is really good. Oh, okay. If you're, like, in a traffic jam, you can just throw that on. Because then even... I mean, let's say it completely fails. Worst case, you're in a five-mile-per-hour accident, right? Yeah. You know? I mean, I could have this car without autopilot, and it would still be my favorite car. Right. I just don't use autopilot i don't need it that's pretty telling because a lot of people there's a lot of people out there that really believe you know every other electric car sucks because it doesn't have autopilot and truth be told like i have autopilot one in my ex and that's fantastic yeah but that's basically advanced cruise control it's not really like self-driving at all if if i i think if you use autopilot that it's definitely an excess like something you want Mm mm-hmm I knew I wasn't going to use it. Yeah. I don't. You don't trust it. You're just, I just not. I don't want it. Like even it. when you drive, when we're all in the car, I 
always ask you to please not use it. Right. Uh, there's just been times where it doesn't make me feel super comfortable. Well, and like the phantom braking thing where you go, there's a shadow on the road and it slams on the brakes. Yeah. That still happens. And, you know, it doesn't happen in my autopilot one. Autopilot it happens only in idea. two and 2.5 or whatever. So this car is really advanced and smart. It had, did, what is about the added cars showing up now? Oh, right. In so the visualization, it's the showing visualization, you all the cars yeah, it and has stuff. added cars. Um, oh, okay. We didn't even talk about the... I do use autopilot. Okay. Remember when it gets me out of danger? Oh, right. So is that's that the... Autopilot? Yeah, that's not autopilot technically. Oh. So what she's talking about is the... Uh, just kind of collision avoidance thing the, where... So if you didn't have autopilot, it, wouldn't do, it would still do it that? It would still do that. Okay. Yeah. This thing trips me out. And I know other cars have it too because I, I believe my Acura had it. Mm -hmm. But... Basically, you know, there's the, the typical when you're drifting lanes or something, it will vibrate. Right, right. But there's been a couple times where it thinks there's a car coming, or, or there is a car coming, I should say. And in San Diego, we have a ton of places where we merge together. They'll throw you into a merge with someone else. Mm -hmm. This is just very common in our freeway system. And so the car will actually, like... Move. Not let not let you go into the lane you're trying to go in. Yeah. Because it's like you're gonna crash into another car. But this is just very California driving. You're like, no, I, this is how I have to <laughs> get off the freeway. I have to kind of look like I'm gonna crash into another car. And yeah. so there's been a couple times where I'm like fighting with the steering wheel. Uh, so I think it's a good thing. It's a safety thing. It's a yeah. Safety yeah. Thing, and my but... ex has done that too, and it's it's saved me from an accident yeah. before. So I've that's really cool. I've had times where it's totally helped me, and I've had times where I'm just like, no, and I override <laughs> it. You know. So I don't yeah. know if that was an update or not. But... So in terms of aftermarket stuff we've done, uh, just to give people the breakdown, uh, we did tint, kind of a must. Oh, you have that um, tint here. We also added a tow package. <laughs> which we've not used, but but actually, you know what's funny is, uh, you know, we're going on this road trip to Phoenix, and uh, we could totally get like a little Thule thing that is a storage container that just oh. sticks out the back. So this car could actually have more storage even than would maybe a Model how, X. Would that affect your range though, and then just it put would, comparable to the Model X? Towing a uh, we have this kind of hard, like tomorrow we're leaving on a road trip and we are, we're like, do we want to take the X? Do we want to take the three? Yeah. I want to take the three because I don't want to stop as much, but we also have a four month old who might want to stop a lot. And the X becomes has really more handy storage in that regard. Yeah. I well, plus the, the, the things we're going to be taking are larger items. They wouldn't even fit in a storage thing. Now, if we had a trailer, that would certainly hurt right. our range okay. um, and all that. But we added a tow hitch, haven't really used it, but maybe for bikes take one of those would be a good use case. Those teardrop a trailer. trailers. Yeah. But we can't because it doesn't have a back. It does. Uh, it does. Oh, it does have a... So so in oh, order to right, tow, you, you need to also... So the tow hitch thing is something you can buy. It's it's, I don't know, it's somewhat invasive, but fairly easy to install. You have to cut into your car. I would say that's invasive. But then the, uh, the actual uh, brake light thing is not something anyone out there sells. So I worked with the guys over at EV West and uh, my friend they... Jehu Garcia, and we custom made it. So we can actually tow a real trailer here, that's which so is cool. kind of cool. I feel like we need to still try that. Yeah. Now, we also updated the trunk to be right, an automatic okay. trunk, which is something you were complaining about from the very beginning. Yep. I complained about it so much. <laughs> and that's you know, served you, us well. You go push the trunk down and sometimes it wouldn't go down. And I don't know if that's something that's, well, again, we have one of the first Model 3s. I don't know if It's super it. common. I was just in Austin with Joe and Tim and uh, we left Joe's trunk open several times because we <laughs> yeah. didn't slam the trunk to close right. it. So you always had to slam it. So you surprised me and got me a auto lift gate thing and you can even wave your foot underneath it and it'll open and it works great it i definitely hear it it's loud and it takes a little while it's like yeah you know like yeah. you have to wait for it but it's nice i just push the button and i it makes a click sound and it makes a beep sound when it closes yeah it has a power uh, uh so what happens is the actual latch moves and so it actually secures kind of like the model x doors you just touch them and then yeah. it'll secure itself so it's always in, but we did have a couple issues with it that were fixed with software updates where it was auto yes. opening and stuff but it auto -opened overall it's been fine yeah you know i mean it's an aftermarket thing so yeah anytime they change the car you have to usually get like some sort of update or something to, right, right? A little software for update i put yeah. on an sd card pop it in the computer but this and was i'm not, done this is not like just go plug in and you have an auto lift gate no so it's pretty, pretty in yeah i mean you're splicing wires for the signals in what's called the can 
which is the c c controller area network. It's like the thing where you hit the c trunk button and it opens. So it's pretty invasive. It's not something I would recommend most people. I wasn't comfortable doing it. Again, hit up my friends at EV West and they kind of helped me perform surgery on it. For them, it was kind of, you know, laughably easy. But for me, it was like, uh, what do we yeah. do? And so, but it works great. Um, now, family use. So we talked a little bit. So we've got two kids and yes. strollers and stuff going to the beach it works but it's not it, comfortable it's funny when when so when i'm just with theo with just the baby fine yeah just picking up jack fine no mm -hmm. big deal although i did um put the stroller in we were out and about i bought a couple things and it's like you either have to rearrange or you have to put some stuff in the back seat. So it's not just this easy yeah. throw stuff in the trunk. Where the Model S was like pretty easy. Oh, Model S had yeah. so much room. So yeah. it is a cozier fit. Now, when you're driving, it's almost laughable because <laughs> the convertible car seat's big and the infant car seat's big. Yeah. So we can't put another person in with us really. Maybe yep. another kid, but like an adult wouldn't want to no. be in here. And then we're kind of cozy. Yeah, right. So... Mm. It's not the best use case but, there. But in our situation, because we have two cars, if it was only one car, I think we'd have to go with the Model S. Right. Because we have two cars, I can choose to have the one I like, which right. is Right, which is kind of nice. To, yeah, this is like a, the easier, fun car to drive, but for yeah. all the utility side, it's lacking in a lot of ways. Right. So two years in, goodbye. Did you like this car? I, yeah, I love this car. It's very fun. It's fit everything we need. You know, it's a little cozy on road trips, a little cozy with our family. We added another baby since There's we There's no it. perfect everything, right? There's no thing no, that's, like, perfect for every situation, it's, so... It's very, like, seasonal, too, right? Like, your kids are small with two car seats for a short period of time. So right. if you think you're going to get a car every few years, then, yeah, you probably buy something that fits better. Uh, I mean, obviously, moment, our yeah. situation, why we got this car, was a lot for testing it out, trying it out, the channel. I don't think I would... I've exchanged it just because I had another kid, though, because, again, we have two vehicles, so yeah, we're fine right. in that sense. But um, it's it's super fun, great daily driver. People love being in it. Uh, you know, nighttime, it's a little weird being really dark. With the, uh, yeah, without any, yeah. any lights except for the center screen. And for, like, my business, I probably would need just something that has a hatchback. Right, so you can put more furniture in there and photograph mm -hmm. things or whatever, yes. yeah. Yeah, I just like something that has a little bit more ease of opening the trunk and being able to throw the seats down. Cool. Well, you heard it here, guys. It's a good buy. I love this guy. Jenny approved. So I hope this video helped you guys explain kind of what the experience has been like for us and, you know, maybe what you're going to go through when, when you buy one or if you have one currently. Leave me a comment down below if there's anything you were curious about that we missed. I'll try to hop in and answer some questions from time to time. Don't forget to subscribe and do all those things. And, uh, and I guess that's it for this one, honey. Thank you when for you joining free, me. When you free the data? Your mind will follow. <laughs> I, was, you always ask I got her to do it. <laughs> See you in the next one, guys.